Will you let him in? Or do you want to limit him to certain areas in certain rooms? God, you come over here and can deal with this. But don't touch my golden calf. Don't, don't, don't touch that. God, you can mess with all of this. Don't, don't touch that. God, you can touch this area because you know what? I'm not re- I'm ready for that. But God, you know this. I'm not too ready to let this go. But, but God, I want to get in you. And when I get in you, I want to get full control. Glory, glory, glory. Mm. Will you give God access to you? Will you give God access to you? Will you let him come in without knocking on the door? But can he walk up into your life and just turn the knob and walk in? Or will we be too ashamed of what he may find? When he walks in. Will he be too ashamed of what's going on? So you've got to understand, God wants to be right here. Yes. Oh. So so actually when I'm praying, when I pray stuff, when I say stuff, I look up to the hills from what's coming from my head. I'm not meaning that God's coming from some far That's away right. place. That's right. That's right. But as I'm looking into my spirit. And I'm saying, God, I know you're living in me. So, so God, I know you don't have to show up. But, but God, just manifest yourself in the midst of where I am. I know you don't have to catch a bus. I know you don't have to get on the plane. I don't know you have to do any of this stuff, God. But, God, I know you're living on the inside of me. And any time you want to manifest, God, I know you will manifest. So, God, I'm looking unto you. Why? Because I know you're in here, God. So, God, I want to give you permission, God, to show up in my life any time you so choose. How many ever felt that they were living life alone? How many ever felt that they were dealing with their struggles by themselves? How many people ever felt that, that all the affairs and issues that it seems like I'm doing it all by myself? Why? Because the devil is looking to make you forget that Christ is in you. He wants you to feel isolated. He wants you to feel lonely. He wants you to feel like everybody hates you. Amen. He wants you to feel like there ain't nobody mean you no good. He wants to, you to make everybody in your life an enemy. Because he knows that if I can get him to forget that God said I will never leave you. Yes. Yes. Nor forsake you. But if I cause them to forget it and not act on it, they can only receive what they're willing to believe. So when they say, I'm in it by myself, God says, even though I want to help them, even though I want to come in, even though I want to change the situation, even though I want to show them how powerful, even though I want to show them that it wasn't meant to kill them, but when they say they had it all by themselves, even though I want to come in, I am refrained by the words that they have spoken. Yes, yes. How many of us are keeping God all of our life right now? How many of us are telling God that you can't handle this? No, God, you can't handle this. You can't handle this. I always tell people, it amazes me, it amazes me that, that we can trust God to save our souls. We can trust God to keep us out of hell. We can trust God that when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart on the Lord Jesus, that immediately, instantaneously, that we will be saved. 
but we can't trust God with that issue. Can't trust God with that man. Hmm. Can't trust him, huh? No cigarettes? Can't trust him with that. He can't handle that. That look, I can't trust him with that. No, he he, he ain't got enough power to get that out of me. You know those women? Oh, yeah, I like them. Oh, yeah, ooh. but I can't trust him to get me to live under control. I can trust him to save me, but I can't trust him to help me to adjust my lifestyle. I mean, I mean how, how, how foolish is that, that God can do the one thing we all need, but the other things we say? But when we get a knowledge that he's in us. Yes. If you take a note, write down Colossians, the first chapter, in verse number 27. I, 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 I'm trying to teach this on person. I'm trying not to scream and all that other stuff because I really want to get this in your spirit. Colossians, the first chapter, in verse number 27. The Bible says this, To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles? Yes. Uh-oh. What is that mystery? Which is Christ in you. The hope of glory. Yes. Christ in me. In me. The hope of glory. In other words, everything that glory is yearning for is in you right now. Everything that glory wants to manifest is right here. Amen. Everything that is going on, God is moving. Christ in you. And what's in you is the hope of glory. In other words, glory is yearning to get out of you what belongs to him. Christ right here. Right here. Creation is moaning and groaning for the sons of God to be revealed. Why? Because, 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 because creation is out of order. But as long as sons don't know their sons, as long as daughters don't know their daughters, creation stays out of order. Why? Because we can't reveal what we are when we don't know what we are. We don't understand who we have in us. And, and you, if you understand that Christ is in you, you understand that everything that he is is right here. Waiting to get out of you. But how does he manifest? He manifests when you find yourself with opposition. <clears throat> you find yourself with trouble. The things that we complain on and complain about and complain in the midst of those are the very things God is using to reveal Christ. So you want to get rid of all your trouble, but your trouble reveals Christ. Because if there's no sin, there's no Savior. If there's no sickness, there's no healing. If there's no chaos, there's no peace. So God says, I use what goes on in your life to reveal to you what I am. If there's no broke, there's no prosperity. If there's no pain, you get no relief. So what are you doing and receiving is a sign right now of what's to come. I want you to write this down. Your pain 
is prophesying your next blessing. Praise your pain is prophesying your next blessing. Your pain is prophesying the next thing God is going to do for you. Praise God. Ooh, I felt that anointing. So why are you complaining? <laughs> so every time you say, Lord, take this away, God says, I can't get what I want to them. Because they don't want to receive my profit. <laughs> Believe in the Lord thy God, you shall be a statue. Believe in his prophet, so shall you prosper. And every time you push away trouble, you push away his prophet. And when you don't receive his property, you can't receive the next level. So, Joseph, if you can't handle the criticism of your brothers to the point of them throwing you in the pit, if you succumb to the criticism of your brothers, you can't receive the next promotion. Amen. <laughs> so, Joseph, if you change what you say because of what's going on, you don't ever get to the next place that promotes you, and God is the only one that can throw you down and be raising you up at the same time. <laughs> God is the only one that can let a man get thrown in a pit and get elevated at the same time. But if you reject the pain, you reject the prophecy. And if you reject the prophecy, you never experience what he is trying to get to you right now. So Joseph had to accept the pain, the hatred of his brothers to get to the next place God had in his life. Amen. All right. The pit. All right. yeah. And after the pit, Potiphar's house. Amen. And, 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 and if someone with a natural eye was looking at it, say, Joseph just had a bunch of bad luck. <laughs> Now Joseph, look at Joseph's life. Oh God, look at it. Now he's at Paul's house. He got him a good job now. Everything going wrong. He's handling the daily affairs of Paul's house. And now look at Potiphar's wife. Yes. Yes. Desires Joseph. Yes. But Joseph being a man of character, Joseph being a man of integrity, Joseph being a man who believed and trusted in God, said, I can't do that. Please, I got to get away from you because I, I can't violate the position that God has given me. Amen. Amen. Oh, look at you there say, I can't violate the position God has given me. Uh huh, yes, 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 yes. You want me to sacrifice my prophecy by engaging in something that God don't want me to have. Amen. So he gets another prophecy that tells him to come down, come down. I want you, I want you, I want you. He runs. And what does Potiphar's wife do? Say, Potiphar, he tried. The thing he ran from was the same thing he got accused of. Amen. Or somebody, yeah, I want you to catch this, I want you to catch this. See, sometimes in your life, the thing you are running from, you're going to be accused of it. Amen. That's it. That's it. Mm. The thing that you are running from, you will be accused of. Yes. You know that time you decided not to go out with that person you weren't supposed to? Amen. And the time you said no? And you said, I ain't going there no more? And now it's all the way around Covington <laughs> that you were with them last night. <laughs> you know, you said you weren't going to do that no more. You weren't going to take that drink. You weren't going to make that phone call. You weren't going to take that ride. And you said no. And the thing that you said no to this time, that's the very thing you are being accused of right now. Amen. But that is a sign. That's what says, a sign. There's a sign that there is another promotion in your life. Because when you can handle being lied on when you know who you are. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you say, I'd rather be 
in prison with a lie than to be out here being lied on with the truth. Somebody missed that. Somebody missed it. Somebody missed it. Somebody missed it. I, I'd rather be in prison knowing that I did what is right and holy than being free but being bound every day of my life. I, I'd rather be in prison having my daily activities limited than being outside and still be in prison because I sacrifice what God has given me. But every time God moved Joseph, God brought somebody in Joseph's life. He met a baker. He met a butler. Isn't it strange that for everything you thought you lost, God gave you something else? For the job you thought you lost, God gave you something else. For the friends you thought you lost, God gave you something else. For the money you thought you lost, God gave you something else. Why? Because God is letting you know if you stay true to what I've given you. And look at him. The man who was favored by his dad, hated by his brothers. Yes. Thrown in the pit. Get into Potiphar's house. Help me, Holy Ghost. Get favored by Potiphar, but disfavored by his wife. Get strong in the prison. And in the midst of the prison, some people have some dreams. Because the same thing that got you in trouble is going to be the same thing that gets you out of trouble. His dreams got him in this mess. But his dreams going to get him out this mess. Oh, somebody missed it. I'm trying to get you. See, see, your dreams got you ostracized, but your dreams going to give you a company to be in front of. Somebody missed it. Somebody missed it. So, touch your say, say, neighbor, 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 whatever got you in it, God's going to use that same thing to get you out of it. So don't disdain what he gave you. Just wait on what he gave you because God said, I'm going to manifest a dream in your life again. Touch your say, don't you stop dreaming. Stop dreaming. You're getting up out this jail. You're going to go back. Amen. And you're going to serve Pharaoh. <laughs> but, oh yes. And you know, if that's what you're saying, just true, Joseph, I'll never forget you. Yeah. 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 Right. If I get out of here, yeah. I won't forget you. I won't forget you. Joseph told him, next thing you know, hey, they out. Yeah. He baking, he serving. <laughs> Joseph's still in jail. Yes, sir. Yeah. Joseph's still chilling. <laughs> Man on his stone bed in this dry place. But what got you in trouble is the same thing that's going to get you out of trouble. Uh -huh. So now Pharaoh's having dreams yes, he that he can't make no sense of. He done called the witches, they can't tell him. He done called the warlocks, they can't tell him. He done called the divinators, they can't tell him. He called the ones who use familiar spirits, they can't tell him. And while the butler was coming in and Pharaoh was complaining that are these dreams, I'm having the same dream over and over, and can't nobody help me out. And while he hearing Pharaoh, he said, well, I know a man. You know, he down there in cell block C. That when I was with him, I had a dream, and he gave me the interpretation of my dream. As a matter of fact, he told me I'd be serving you. Oh, oh, Woo! Amen. Joseph. Wow. And Pharaoh said, go get him. Go get that boy. 
I've been having dreams, ain't nobody helped me out. Can't tell me what these dreams mean. I'm tired of having this same dream over and over and over, and nobody there to tell me what this means. Can I tell you what I dream? No, don't tell me. Send me back to prison. <laughs> Put me back in my cell. Because God will reveal it Amen. to me. And Joseph lay down that night. And God, as Pharaoh, I imagined in my sanctified mind, lay down that night. And I believe that when Pharaoh closed his eyes and Joseph closed his eyes, this ain't in the Bible, I'm just using my imagination, don't go tell nobody I, I said this was in the Bible, but, but I believe that they fell asleep about the same time. And I believe that Pharaoh started dreaming. And immediately when the dream came to his mind, God said, I'm just going to plug you into his system. And I'm going to let you see the same thing that Pharaoh is seeing. And Pharaoh is seeing these years that, that seemed like everything was going to be great and everything was wonderful. But he saw some things that were, that were not so good and not so bland. And, and, and they joined the same dream. And, and they woke up the next morning and, 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 and Pharaoh said, bring that boy to me. God told me. I had the dream you had. He gave them the interpretation. He said you're going to have three and a half years of plenty. You're going to have three and a half years of famine. But every time, I'm not just going to tell you what it means. I'm going to give you something you ain't asked for. I'm going to give you some wisdom about the dream. God wants you to know, Pharaoh, that you want to use these plenty years yes, to prepare for the years of famine. Because when God gives you a gift, he throws in a little extra with you. That, that even though he didn't ask for any advice, he just wanted the interpretation. But he told I'm going to give you what you want, but I'm going to tell you what you need. You just don't need the interpretation, Pharaoh, but you need to stop The one he looked at. Uh -huh. He said, You know what? <laughs> Some of y'all about to get demoted. Because <laughs> this joker right here, yes, he told me uh -huh. not just what I want, uh -huh. but he gave me just what I needed. And when he gave me, I'm going to make you uh -huh. the prince. Of each. In other words, only person you answer to is me. But everybody, he, he, he said, you remember the warning of the jail? Do you remember the guard that held you in the jail? Guess what? They got to answer you now. Oh, somebody just, somebody just, because everything in the kingdom now is going to revolve around you. And, and since you told me that we're going to have some food problems, since you told me that there's going to be some family, now I give you the authority to be the food distributor. Yes, yes. <laughs> Ooh, help me, Holy Ghost. So, but, but, but God said I had a plan because I want you to know that I was the same God that was with you when you had your first dream. And I was the same God that was with you when the dream put you in the pit. And I'm the same God that was with you while you were in the pit that ended up in Potiphar's house I was with you. And I was the same God that let you rule Potiphar's house but I was the same God that let you go to prison. I was the same God while you were in prison that you helped left two people and they forgot about you for a season but they actually didn't forget about you because your gift wasn't needed yet. But God said I was just manipulating your things around because I had to get them in the right place Oh, touch it and say, just 
for a night. Oh, tell me, say, just for a night. He called up out the prison, but Joseph said, let me go back. <laughs> I tell you, I'm going back. Okay, I missed it. I missed it, I missed it, I missed it, Jess, I missed it. Just, I'm just going back, just one more night, one more night, one more night. Some of y'all slow touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going back just for one more night. I, 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 I got to go back just for one more night because I don't want them to see that someone told me what he did. I want to go back to it. Nobody knows what's going on in Pharaoh's house. So if God don't get it to me, it can't be given to me. I don't want no super Attention. 
Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Look what he says. Abide in me. And I in you. Uh oh. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire. Can I, re- can I tell you reason some, some of y'all are hot right now? Because you where you're supposed to be because you ain't connected to God. Amen. And when you get to disconnect from God, you are no more good, so I throw you in the fire. Because I have to kill that which is not meant to be here. Uh-oh. <laughs> Somebody missed that. What you saying? He says, when you disconnect from me, he says, your life withers. He says, and when you go into your yard and you see something dead, what you do? When you wake up your grass, what you do? Because you don't even like seeing nothing dead in your garden. And God says, I'm the same way. I burn it up. Hmm. And they are burned. But look what he says. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will. And it shall be done Unto you. Yes. Let me help you real quick. That's why you got to stop looking for Jesus. And start looking for Jesus. Because they had the same problem. Acts, the first chapter, reading your spare time, first number nine, Jesus was ascending up on the cloud. Mm-hmm. And they, they, they saw Jesus being taken back to the glory of his Father, and they were just looking. They were marvelous. They couldn't take their eyes off of it. And they said, You men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into heaven? The same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner. That's right. As you are seeing him going to heaven. In other words, why stand here looking up when God's trying to get you to look in? Oh, you standing up. I need you to get to that upper room. But you can't get to the upper room if you can't get past. You can't get to that promotion. You can't get to that blessing. Because yeah. the cop looking. Wow, look at Jesus. Wow, did y'all, did, are y'all seeing this? Do y'all see, gee, wow, I ain't never seen nothing like this before. But he says, don't get excited. He said, stop looking up. He said, because the same one he has seen coming back the same way. In other words, stop looking into the heavens as if you lost something. <laughs> stop looking. He was preparing you. He says, you will not know me in this same way after yes. a minute. I'm preparing you to go to the next level of walking with God. Then he tells us in John, the 16th chapter, in the 13th verse, I preach a message about this. I think I preached it here. He says, How be it when ye, he, the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. 
But look what it says. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, yes. that shall he speak. Amen. And he will show you things to come. Amen. Can I leave you with this? The reason we can't tell people of things to come because we are speaking about ourselves and not listening to what he's saying about himself. The Holy Spirit doesn't testify to himself. Amen. He says, I only testify what I hear. Amen. In the same manner that Jesus says, I don't testify of myself. I testify of my Father. Yes. I, 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 I preach a message and teach a message that, see, by the time a word gets to you, it's already been spoken three times. Yes. And at the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word be established. So you think the word was established because you were having a conversation with a friend and they said something and then you heard somebody else say something then when you got to church and heard it, ooh, that must be a word. Mm. And it was confirmed. Uh-uh. By the time the word gets you, to you, God spoke it. The Holy Spirit spoke it. Amen. I mean, the Son spoke it, Jesus, then the Holy Spirit spoke it. And then you spoke it. By the time it comes off your mouth, that's the fourth time it's spoken. Amen. In other words, God says, I don't trust the word to be established when it makes it to you. I make the word established before it gets to you. Amen. At the mouth of two or three words. He said, I testify of it. My son testify of it. My Holy Spirit testify of it. He said, this is already established. That's why we said, let there be it was. I'm, I'm gone. Praise God. I don't need, I won't touch and agree with you. I'm not touching and agree with you in that sense of trying to make it come to pass. I'm touching and agree with you that God, whatever you say, it's already here. Help me to prepare myself for what you already established in the earth. That's why I tell you, stop listening to people. You ain't tell your story to people because they're going to pray against it and they're going to hate on you and they're going to stop your blessing. Garbage. Rubbish. Can't no man stop an established word. Can I pick up the Old Testament real quick? He said, that's why my word's going to prosper wherever I send it. My word cannot return unto me, boy. Because if it comes back to me and it did not perform what I said, it was not my word. So when I released it, I knew. I said like this. He speaks the word. The word leaves. <laughs> Do you remember the time that God spoke a word but it had a battle in the heavens? I believe Daniel was getting discouraged. Because Daniel was used to praying. That's right. yes, he was used right. to praying. Amen. And when he prayed, God answered. Yes. And God moved. That's right. And he had a war in the heavens. That's right. The devil was trying to stop the word. Yes. He had a little fight going on. Yes. I think he said Gabriel died. He said, oh no, you can't stop this. Because this word has a job to do. So he sent Gabriel down and said, devil, get out the way of this word. And he had let him know, I sent the answer when you first said it. Because it just got caught up. But because it got caught up, doesn't mean it wasn't on his way. And then I said like this, when God sends the word, he just waiting for the word to come back in his presence. Ready to say these two words. Mission accomplished. Tell people time. That's why Jesus had to be the living word of God. They could not stone him. Because the word was not meant to die that way. They could not throw 
him off the cliff because the word was not meant to die. They could not break the bones of the word because he was not meant to go out that way. He gave the word assignment and they died for the sins of the world and he could not have a bone broken in his body and he went all the way to the cross. He's the only one. The thief on the right side, the thief on the left side, they fight. They try to hold themselves up. They try to alleviate the pain because they still had some strength in them. And they were trying to. So, so what they did, they broke the legs right? because they wanted them to submit. They broke their bones because they wanted them to submit to the pressure of hanging. And when they submit to the pressure of hanging, they would die. Yes. But that one in the middle. <laughs> I heard a songwriter say it was not the nails that nailed him there. Amen. No, it wasn't. No. He could have called for leeches of yes. angels yes. to take him off the cross. Yes. But Isaiah had prophesied about this too much. That's right. Isaiah has spoken about this too much. It said not a bone was going to be broken. So while the thief on the left side was still fighting, they had to break his bones. And he caused him to submit. While the thief on the right was still fighting, they had to break his bones to cause him to submit. But Jesus, the one in the middle, Said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Then he said these magical three words. It is finished. And his head fell in the lock of his shoulder. And he died. And they made it to the one in the middle. They were looking. They said, there's no need to break his leg. He's already submitted. And they took his body off the cross. Because the word had said some stuff. He said, I'm going to destroy this temple. And today, I'm going to build it back up again. But, but before I do that, I got some unfinished business. Because you know, anytime somebody picked on the younger brother, the older brother got to come finish the fight. Oh, somebody y'all missed it. Somebody y'all missed it. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. See, if you read the genealogy of Luke, it is different from the other genealogy because he tells us that Adam was the son of God. He was the first created son of God. Jesus was the only begotten son of God. And the church is the mystical son of God. Beloved, it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we shall be like him. Yeah. 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 He said, Devil, I heard you mess with my brother. Yes, sir. And you took something. Yes, sir. You took some keys from him. You took some authority from him. You took some power from him. For, from death, hell, and the grave. He said, and everything you took from my brother, I come to get it back. Help me, Holy Ghost. And the Bible says he descended to the lower parts of the and, and he preached a couple of nights nice revival. He said, Abraham is time to come on home. He said, Moses is time to come on home. He said, David, the man of the God's own heart, is time to come on home. Give me back what's mine. Ooh, I felt that. But on earth, they were still nervous. The disciples didn't know what to do. Their leader was gone. The man that they followed religiously for the last three, sometimes three years, sometimes three, three and a half years, the one who gave them a meaningful life was gone. Yeah. Yeah. Sir went back to fishing. Yeah. Yes. 
start with that. Thomas said, if I don't touch it, they all going crazy. Yeah. They don't know what to do. He said, I ain't finished. Yes. The, the Roman said, put some guards up. Because uh-huh. we don't want them to steal that body. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. And so he got up. Yeah. <laughs> and look what he did. For the first time in human history, he was not the first man I heard one preacher say to get up from the dead. Because I mean, when Elisha's body fell on a man, he jumped up out the grave. Amen. I mean, when the widow's son died, he caused yeah. him to be raised up. I remember Jairus' daughter, Jesus raised him up. I remember Lazarus, Jesus raised him up. He was not the first one to die and get up. No, 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 no. He was not the first one to die and get up. But he was the first one who didn't need a prophet to raise him up. God said, bring some angels down here. Let them unveil their glory and knock the soldiers out. They had to come and roll the stone away. Because when you find a king, he's never supposed to open the door for himself. Oh, no, no, he's never supposed to open the door for himself. They, they had to open the door for him. And, and he was the first one that he did not say Jesus come for. He did not come to lay on John the door and tell her down to get up. He did not lay on his body and his dead boy got up. He was the only one that got up on his own house. And walked right on. From his own accord. He said, I still got some work to do. Because I ain't spent three years with these no good Nimrods for them to go back fishing. I didn't speak three years with them to go back to what they were doing before I met them. So they went fishing all night long. And they ain't catch nothing. All of a sudden, somebody shut up. And tell them that's lunch. Uh-huh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and to the deep. Yes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've been fishing all night long. Who are you? This is what I do. I'm a fisherman. What you mean? <laughs> to launch into the deep. Uh-huh. And they launch a little deep. Yeah. They started coming up. Uh-huh. And the nets yes. started to break. Yes. Cut so much fish. Yes. And he just disappeared. Yes. And they perceived that this was not just a man. Yes. They said, This had to be my master. Yes. This had to be the one who was speaking into my life. But he said, I did I tell you, boy, that you ain't going to fish no more? You're going to be fishing for me? So this is just a sign. That Peter, you're going to preach the first revival. After I get up. And over 3,000 souls are going to be added. They're going to be saved. Because I called you. I remember they said they were walking. They were dropping down the road. Yes, sir. I ain't mean to tell y'all all this, y'all. I need to go on. And they were having a conversation. Yes, they were debating what ever happened to Jesus. Yes. And a man, a third man just showed up. Yes. And on about a three mile journey, I believe it was, he told them everything that was to be about Jesus yes. from Genesis up until the present moment in time. And after he told them who he was, he disappeared. And they said, I perceive that that could not just have been any other man, man, that had to be my Lord, that had to be my faith. In, in other words, God said, everyone who thought they were leaving, I was going to gather them back home. Yes, 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 yes. Can I help y'all out? Yes, Can we apologize to Thomas? Uh, yes. Can we apologize to Thomas? Because 
We say Thomas was doubting. No, Thomas wasn't doubting. He really wasn't. Jesus revealed himself to everybody else. Thomas wasn't there. And Thomas said, if I don't touch him, I won't believe. You know what Thomas was saying, just like some of you. I know you had an experience. But until I get my own experience. Testimony. I, I love what you said about you, but I need that show that I need my own experience. I need the word for me to touch for myself. Did I just want my own? Because if I just have your word, they can tell me I don't know. But when I get my own, when I get my, tell say when you get your own, I, I don't care what they say about him. When you get your own, I don't care what men lie on him. When you get your own, uh, when you know what he's able to do for yourself, you can stand in the midst of hell and say, I've had an experience with my Savior and I know. I just want my own. 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 Thank you, Because there ain't nothing like See, it's, 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 it's just like, it's just like, you could be genuinely happy if I tell you I got me a new car. You could be happy. Oh, you could be happy for me. You don't even mind driving it one time. And you'll be happy. But you know after you finish driving it, I got to give the keys back to you. But when I get my own, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. When I get my own, I get behind the wheel. And I put that key in the ignition. And I turn that ignition. And I start driving. And it ain't going to be a lesson like you got it. Can y'all believe what Nicki Minaj did? That was just so disrespectful. Blah, blah, blah. I went, why y'all tripping? Sin or sin? Amen. Sin or sin? Why do church folk get mad when sin is sin? But they make excuses when saints sin. Preachers calling out preachers who calling out nigga and not talking about she didn't get her life right, but they won't talk about their best friend who got babies all over the church. No, that's false boldness. That's right. When somebody was robbing, getting the church down there in Florida, all of them was quiet. But everybody won't talk about Nikki. She's a sinner. She said, Leave her alone. Let's clean up the church. Because the silence of the church is definite. Yes. Yeah. I told him, until y'all call out some preacher's name, I don't want to hear you. Amen. Amen. We won't talk about Nikki. Everybody talking about Nikki. Well, call out some of these preachers. Amen. Help me understand why I go to some churches, they think they pastor more than they think Jesus. No, 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 you won't help me understand that. I, I thank God for the man of God. I know I understand I thought I understand respect, but at the end of the day, if you say my name in your life more than you say the name of Jesus, you are out of order, and God ain't nowhere in that mess. Because my job is not to point you to me. My job is to point you to him. 
I gotta go. We gotta go. I might teach this that sweet home no more. I don't know. <laughs> But you get it? Let the sinners do what they do. You just don't be counted a monster. It's just like when I see people, or you know, you know, okay, I'm in a relationship with somebody, and they cheat on me. And I meet the person they're cheating on, and I want to beat them up. <laughs> Unless that person is a good friend of mine, you owe me nothing. Yeah. You owe me nothing. My problem is with you. Because you're the one that said you love me. You're the one that said you were going to be with me. You're the one that we had a relationship with. I ain't mad at the third party. But we want to beat up the third party and forgive the one that who said they loved you. How many of us are beating up the innocents in our life instead of dealing with the guilty around us? Let me tell you something. I got some people, you know, tell me something. Say, you know what? You know what's been disturbing me in my life? I've been telling people I love. Letting them know what's going on when I go in these courtrooms all across the state of Louisiana. Seeing people being sitting away for 30 years, for 40 years. To see someone, I see an 18-year-old the other day got sentenced. 18-year-old white male in Lipson got sentenced to 30 years in jail. And I'm telling them, have to do 85% of it. So that means he has to stay there at least 27 and a half years before he's eligible to come out. And I'm warning, I'm warning, I'm telling them, whatever you're doing, you need to stop. And it seems like on a daily basis, people I'm pouring my life into are choosing to go the other way. And then they want me to play hero when they get locked up. When I was playing hero to tell you, don't go there. I'm a lawyer. I just don't want to be yours. I'm trying to warn you. Time to deal with some stuff. Too much warning going out here. Too much going on around here. Looking at the day, you find out how sin deceives people. I had a man in court with my friend. She works for the public defender's office. The man was looking at 10 years to be revoked on probation. He has five prior felony convictions. He had about five felonies on the docket. They were going to give him seven years. There's a black man. He's about 45 years old. Going to give him seven years. Been in jail about a year. Would have got all the credit for the time that he was on probation. Up until the present day. Would have probably stayed in jail another two years and be eligible to come home. Go through the whole dissertation. He says, well, um, your honor, I just don't feel like my attorney is representing me. Everybody in the courtroom went like this. The judge looked at me like, what? <laughs> I'm looking like, what? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> and he says, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'm not taking your plea. No, no, you don't want to take it. He said, no, deal's off the table. True. We'll set you for trial. Yes. They set him for revocation. So next time he's going to go to court, they're going to go ahead and sentence him to the 10 years. Yes. Then they're going to try him. Yes. They're going to convict him. Then they're going to habitually offend him and he would get life. He would never come home. Now he has to trade the rest of his life for thinking about one second of stupidity. But sin deceives you when you think you know better than others who are trying to help you out. So what's going to happen? 
He's going to be tormented. Not because he's in jail for the rest of his life, but because he knew he could have been home. And what is the torment of hell? I don't think it's the fire. I don't think it's even the eternity. I think according to some scripture, it's going to have your memory. That every time you came to church, and you could have got your life right, every time God reached out to you, saying, get it right, give your life to me, change your way, change your way, you're going to be in hell, and your mind's going to torment you say, I had every opportunity to get it right. But I thought I had another day. I said, tomorrow. I said, next week. I said, why you worried about me? You live your life, I live mine. And all those words are going to come back. Y'all stand up, it's time to go.